All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go through some Azure interview questions and answers. So if you've applied for an Azure engineer role, then this is the video that you want to watch because I'm going to take you through some of the questions and answers that I've, I've asked engineers and that I've been asked when I've applied for those type of roles. And I really want you guys to get an understanding of what you're going to be asked so that you can smash that like button. I mean, smash your interview. As usual, if you are enjoying this content and if you think that I am bringing you some type of value, smash the subscribe button. I'm making lots of videos about IT, whether it's about cloud or whether it's about on-premises or whether it's your job or whether it's your home IT, whatever it is, I'm trying to make some fun out of it, make some videos out of it. I'd love for you guys to join me, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I'm trying to remember to tell you guys that as well. Let's go. All right, so whether you've applied for an Azure system engineer role or a, or a system engineer role with some Azure experience or whether you are just sort of gauging the market and trying to understand what type of questions you'll be asked when you're going for those Azure roles, this is the video for you. Let's start with the questions and answers. The first question after rank is, what is Azure Active Directory? As I was moving through my roles that I've had, and you can see them in the link below above, you can see them in the link above. So if, as I was going through those type of roles, I found that a lot of people didn't really understand what Azure Active Directory does and whether it actually replaces on-premises Active Directory or whether it's supplementary to Active Directory on-premises. So that is one of the first type of questions that I'll ask because I'm interested to see how much people's knowledge has changed on Azure Active Directory. So I'll ask that question and the type of answer that I'm looking for is, basically nor here nor there. What I'm trying to understand is whether you know what Azure Active Directory is and that you understand that it is the authentication platform for your Microsoft Azure subscription, your Microsoft 365 subscription, and it can be your authentication platform for many other applications. So not too in depth with that one because I think Azure Active Directory might also fall into some M365 engineering roles as well. So if you don't fully understand Azure Active Directory, I don't think it is the end of the world. It would be great if you could tell me something about Azure Active Directory Connect as well, which is the tool that we use to sync on-premises Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. It'd be great if you can give me an example or a use case for that. But if not, it's okay. I'm just trying to understand your knowledge. What are some of the roles in Azure Active Directory that you can give to a privileged user? So. What I'm trying to gauge here is, have you actually used the roles in Azure Active Directory? So do you have an understanding of what a global administrator is? Do you have an understanding of what a user administrator is? Can you tell me when you would use one and not the other? That's the type of thing that I'm trying to gauge. I just really want to understand that you know that there's different levels of privileged roles and that you can actually apply them for different purposes. How do you start and stop a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure? As a engineer, you're going to be supporting virtual machines. A lot of people think that you move to Microsoft Azure and that there is no more virtual machine, that everything's serverless and everything's wonderful and everything's cheap, but it's just not the case. From experience as an engineer, as an architect, I'm telling you now that just as many virtual machines that there used to be on premises, there is also in Microsoft Azure. People aren't getting rid of their virtual machines as fast as they would like to. What that means is that our engineers are going to have to administer virtual machines in Microsoft Azure. So stopping machines, starting machines, I want to know that you understand how to do that and it would be great if you can give me some different answers. So telling me that you can turn it on and off from the GUI, that's great, but if you can tell me that you can do it from PowerShell, that you can do it from CLI, that you can do it from a Logic app, or something along those lines, that was even better because then I see innovation. I see someone who's sort of looking for different ways to do things and not sort of just going down the same path of going into Internet Explorer and going, finding the virtual machine and pressing stop. It's great if I can see a different answer. So when we're talking about an Azure engineer role, it's very different to an architect role. But one of the questions that I will also ask is how can an organization connect from their on-premises environment into Microsoft Azure? The reason that I'll ask that question is because I want to make sure that you understand that you know how traffic flows between an on-prem environment and Microsoft Azure. So working in a MSP, you're gonna be working on in customers that are larger. So if they're large enough to be managed by an MSP, then they're probably going to have some sort of on-premises hardware. And if they have presence in Microsoft Azure, then they're probably going to also want to connect with Microsoft Azure from that on-premises hardware. As an architect, of course, you know that there is different options like internet. We have 
um, express route, we have site to site VPN, point to site VPN. But if you can tell me that as an engineer, to me that shows that you actually have a very high level of interest in how things work in Microsoft Azure. If an engineer can tell me that there is a few different options and that we have a point to site VPN or site to site VPN or an express route, I don't necessarily need to hear you tell me the difference, but what I would like you to know is that there is a difference and that there is different use cases for all of them. And that would be great to understand as well. As an engineer, you're going to be supporting that connectivity. So it's good to know that you know what it is. I'll also ask you questions like, have you had issues with any Azure resources in the past? What type of tickets have you come across that to do with Microsoft Azure? What have you troubleshooted in Microsoft Azure? What have you experienced as a problem or a limitation when using Microsoft Azure? And this will be a open question. Again, there is no right or wrong answer in this question. What I am trying to understand is how much experience you actually have in the tech. So if you tell me that you have three or four years experience in Microsoft Azure, then I want to see that you've had some sort of issue in Microsoft Azure because whatever we do in IT, we have some sort of issue. Maybe you can tell me about some limitations that you have in Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft Azure can't host DHCP services. Microsoft Azure can't host an always on VPN environment. If you can tell me how you can replace those services in Microsoft Azure, that's even better. Any of those type of limitations or problems that you've come across in the past, if you just sort of talk about them, that would please the interviewer a lot. I think that you would really show that you have the experience that's necessary if you did something like that, if you were able to describe a limitation or a support issue that you've had in the past. Okay, so as an Azure engineer, you're going to come across a lot of scenarios that come through as tickets or come through as issues from your customers. So I might try and actually think of some that I've had in the past and then ask you them. One of the ones that I generally like to ask is around backup. You walk in on Monday morning and there is a VM that is down down in Microsoft Azure, so a VM, a virtual machine. The VM has been down over the weekend. You know that there is a backup in Microsoft Azure because you're using Azure backups and we just want to restore it. So I'm going to ask you how you would restore it, what you would do in the console to restore it or via PowerShell or however you're going to do it. I'm just going to ask you how you would actually go about restoring that virtual machine back to its state on Friday and what the limitations or what the process would be to do so. So if you can describe that to me, if you can tell me you go to the portal and you go to the recovery services vault, you find the VM and from there you just describe to me how you restore the VM, that's all I'm looking for at that point. As BAU, you're going to be asked a lot of project questions. So for example, you might come across a ticket where the customer wants you to provision a new VM. I'm going to ask you, how do you actually provision a VM and what are some of the best practices that you're going to apply when you are provisioning it. As an Azure engineer, if you've done your Microsoft Azure certification, then you should actually know what the best practices are. Does it, it's not just an architect who needs to know this type of stuff. As an engineer, you need to know that you should be analyzing things like cost, like size, like backups, like DR. You should take all those things into consideration when you're provisioning a new virtual machine. And that's the type of answer I'm looking for. So I'm just looking for those basic principles and that you can relate them to Microsoft Azure. So if you say that we need to think about DR, I really want you to be talking about something like Azure Site Recovery. So are you going to add them into the, the protected services? Are you going to add them into the Azure backups? Are you going to make sure that you add the right tags for compliance and governance? Those are the type of questions I'm looking for. This one is a bit of a trick question. I might ask you a, I might put you in a scenario where a customer, a VIP or a GM or a CEO or something like that calls you and they tell you that they're sick of getting multi-factor authentication prompts from Azure Active Directory and they demand that you exclude them from the policy. Again, I'm not looking for a right or wrong answer here. What I'm looking for is tell me how you would deal with that scenario. So what would you do to sort of de-escalate that situation and would you actually turn off the MFA or not? It's a bit of a tricky one. I'm sort of just trying to understand how you can actually deal with that sort of pressure because that is an actual issue that comes up a lot. And I just wanna know how you would actually 
deal with that user in that situation. All right, so I hope that that helps. I hope that you land those roles that you're looking for. And if you do enjoy these videos, then smash the like button like you're going to smash your interviews. And we'll see you next time.